Hi everyone! Thanks for joining me today for this premiere video. I am so excited to be here and to have you join me today to watch this video. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. And if you're new, click on that subscribe button down below and the bell next to it to be notified when I upload new content. I'm Dawn and I'm the owner of Creative Applicate. So thanks for joining me on my channel today. So I have a question for you. Do you stitch a lot of high intensity, high stitch volume designs, 100,000 stitches, 200,000 stitches, or maybe more? Do you do some of those beautiful tiling scenes where you have a bunch of tiles that you then sew together at the end? How about quilt blocks or patches? What about freestanding? lace, towels, denim jackets, the list goes on and on. But a lot of times those kind of things are a little bit more challenging to get into our regular hoops and the regular hoops sometimes don't have the strength and the intensity to hold the stabilizer or the fabrics in the hoop very securely. Well, I have an amazing product to share with you today, but first I want to tell you two things actually three. First one is, if you stick around to the end of the video, I have a free design for you for joining me today. The second thing is, if you decide to purchase this frame from Durky Hoops, you will receive a very nice discount if you use the code that I will give you at the end. And also, I'm watching this with you real time right now, so if you see the chat running, Leave your comments and questions there and Durky Hoops and I will try to answer them as best we can during the live premiere. You can also leave comments under the video if you're watching the replay and we will get those questions answered for you as well. So what frame am I talking about? This is the frame we're going to be talking about today. So if you're interested to know more, stay tuned. So this frame is called a sash frame and it is made by Durkee. They have sash frames for some multi-needle machines, select models, and some select models of single needle machines. Sash frames have been around in the industry, in the professional or uh, commercial end of the embroidery business for a very long time, but we haven't had the opportunity and the privilege to have sash frames for single needle machines until now. And this is Durkee's sash frame. So let's go to the cutting table and find out more specifics about the frame. These are the Durkee sash frames. They are made for select single needle flatbed machines. So these are for all my single needle ladies. And they come in two different sizes. So the one on the right here will fit on machines that have a maximum sewing field of 9.5 by 14 inches. The one on the right, the left here, can fit on machines that have a maximum sewing field of 10 and 5 eighths by 16 inches high. Now let us talk a little bit about each of these hoops and some specifics. So when you receive these hoops in the mail, they will come with what you see here. So this is the frame that will fit on machines that have a maximum sewing field of 9.5 by 14 inches. But when you look at this frame, when you receive it, it says right here on the sticker, it has an eight by 12 inch design that it could fit in this frame. And up here, it is very important to heed this warning that the maximum sewing field for this frame is nine by 12. Any larger, um, design can cause contact with the frame and the machine. So it's very important to trace, 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 trace your design. And we will do that when we get to the machine. But when you receive these hoops, you will receive a handle here to help you pop off these clamps. And 
depending on the machine, on the frame, there are different number of clamps. So this one has four clamps and it's very easy. You can slide it on from the side if you wish, or you can just simply put it in there like that and they pop off very easily. So when you are hooping an item though, you can see there's this lip here on the edge of these clamps. These lips need to be towards the outside. So for every one you're using, they need to be at the top, at the bottom, at the right, and at the left. And so it's very important that you make sure that when you are hooping the item, you have the, the ledges, the edges of the clamps towards the outside of the frame. So that's one thing to be very um, aware of. You can see here, the frame, this one, the 8x12, has two different sizes. The longer size is going to fit on the vertical sides here, and the shorter ones are going to fit on the narrower width here. So this is the 8x12 one that will fit on machines with the 9.5 by 14 inch sewing field. And now let's look at the other one for the larger sewing field. Now this one, let's turn it around this way, has a sewing field of 9.5 by 14. This will fit on a machine with that has a sewing field of 10.5 eighths by 16 inches. But the largest design you can fit within this area here is 9.5 by 14. So again, we need to make sure we trace the design when we get it on the machine. And again, same thing here. We can remove the clamps very easily. I wanted to show you on this one, it has six clamps and show you the difference in this. So with this one, you can see four of them are the same size. But for the four that are the same size, you're going to have two that are going to be on the shorter sides, two that are going to be on the longer sides, along with these two shorter pieces. And again, all of the lips on the edges on the clamps need to be pointing outside of the frame. You will also receive this information about how the size of the sewing field that the sash frame will accommodate, and that is imperative. You trace your design before stitching. One of the things that you'll want to do with the machine too is set the correct frame size. So making sure that you have this set to nine by 14 or the other one set at eight by 12. So what are the advantages of these sash frames? Why would you want to use a sash frame like this? Well, one of the things that they do is they allow for extremely snug hooping. There's not going to be any uh, give in the material when you hoop it. It's going to be very snug with these clamps holding it down, the stabilizer and the fabric you're stitching on. It's going to be very snug. Uh, you're going to have it's going to take less effort to hoop with putting these clamps on. Uh, they're perfect for using large, dense designs like photo stitch, uh, stitching multiple badges or patches. Also, a design that has anywhere from 50,000 to 100,000 stitches in an area like this is very stitch intense. And so that would be something that would be perfect for this. Freestanding lace is also wonderful for these frames. These frames are made from sturdy aluminum. So even though they are solid metal, they are relatively light. Now on the back side of the frame here, so here we have the 
part that attaches to the arm. We have this pla clear plastic here. This allows for the frame to slide and glide smoothly and easily on the bed of your machine. And it also prevents it from rubbing or pre creating any hoop drag by the hoop having to fight against the bed of the machine. So it allows it to be uh, smooth and easily moving along when your machine is stitching. Uh, something else I want to show you on these frames that they have is they there is marks for centering. So here there's a notch, there's a notch here, there's also a notch here, and it corresponds to the notch here in the um, sorry, it corresponds to the arrow. There's a little arrow right here on the part that attaches to the arm of the embroidery machine. So now let's get some fabric and let's show you how to center it on these and then we will stitch something up. Okay, I have my fabric here and I marked it so that I have the exact center. What I'm going to be stitching is a photo stitch. And so I wanna make sure that it's going to be centered in the fabric and I have it placed where I want it to be um, exactly on this piece of fabric to make a pillow out of it. So I have a piece of linen here and I did fusible mesh on the back so that it's stabilized really well. So now, remember we talked about these alignment parts here? So we're going to take the lines and make sure they are lined up with these cutouts here, okay? And so I'm going to make that one there, and then this side, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see it on the side. So you just, it's, it's hard to see it from above, but you can see it from the side. So I've got that line there, that line there. This is wash away pen so that when it's finished embroidering, I can very easily remove it. So now over here on this side, this side has the arrow. Remember, it doesn't have the cutout. There is a little bit of a cutout right in here that, again, you can see it from looking at the side, but it's easier when you're on top. You can look just at that arrow. So I think this line looks pretty crooked to me. So I'm going to go off of this one, and it's pretty much centered. So now what I'm going to do, remember the two longer ones are going to go on the sides. The two shorter ones are going to go at the top and the bottom. This is the eight by 12 hoop. All right, so now we have this center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to simply take this and I'm gonna flatten out my fabric as I do it. And I'm gonna come around the curve here and feel the sides. And I'm gonna press down on the one side and on the other and you can hear it snap into place. And so I like to do this for, so I do the bottom here. Remember, the ledges are going to be on the outside. So this one being up here has the, the edge here. This one at the bottom has the edge closest to me. And again, I'm going to smooth it out and feel the sides. Yep, press down. Okay, smooth out the side. Sometimes it's easier to do this toward yourself. Okay, so we have it all hooped. The, remember the edges are all on the outside here and it's centered and now we're going to go take it to the machine. 
Okay, so sometimes these clamps can be a little challenging to get on if you don't have strong hands. The smaller ones, the shorter ones aren't so bad, but sometimes these longer ones can be a little challenging. So you could get a rubber mallet if that helps, but one of the things I also found was if you put take the handle, the removal tool, and put it in there and kind of hold it, and then you can press down on the one side, and then the other side snaps in. So that may be a way to help you get these on easier. Okay, so here we are at the machine. I have the design loaded to my machine, but I want to go into the settings of the machine and I want to make sure the embroidery frame, the uh, hoop that I'm using is going to be set at the 8 by 12. So right now the frame size is 10.5 8 by 16 and I'm going to change that. This will probably look different on your machine if you don't have the machine I have. I'm using the Brother Luminaire. So that's what that looks like. And I'm gonna slow the machine down a little bit because I'm stitching the photo stitch. Now one other thing that I wanna talk about um, that's very important is some machines have this photo ability to, ability to scan and you do not want to scan your design on in the frame on your machine if you do that there's the potential of the hoop moving too far in the corners and too far into the edges of the metal clamps so i would encourage you not to do any kind of scanning not to do any kind of uh, using the camera like that the one thing that you're going to do though once we load the hoop to the machine is we are going to trace so we need to do that so now we're going to switch over to putting the hoop on one other thing that you're going to want to have is this is called a riser and it goes on top of the throat plate here and what it does is it lifts up essentially where the bottom of the presser foot is going to be hitting and when you have something that is hooped in these sash frames the fabric and stabilizer is really really snug and you want to make sure that when it is stitching down it's not going to be hitting all the way down on the bottom of the throat plate it gives that a little lift for the presser foot to touch and therefore not bowing the fabric every time a stitch is taken. So it's not mandatory, but it's suggested. Okay, so here we are at the machine and we have the part that attaches over here. Now, if you can see here, if I try to put the frame on where it needs to match up over here, you can see that I am hitting the metal clamp. So we need to slide in from the side. So I'm going to come from the top left corner here and I'm going to slide on in between the two metal clamps. Now, some of the parts, the ribbed parts of the frame actually are longer here than the metal black metal clamps are not to worry just make sure you are aware of where that is so you slide in at a diagonal and then you can attach the part onto the arm over here and then slide it down so now we have the hoop on the machine and the very next thing that we're going to do is we are going to trace the design. So back over here, this little symbol here may look different on your machine depending on the brand you have, but 
what we want to do is we don't want to touch any of these buttons here. This is going to take us to the far corners and everything. We don't want that. We just want to trace the design in the hoop. So we're going to press this button here. And once I do that, it's going to trace the design. So back over here, we are going to do the trace. And it goes to the bottom left, the width, the height, the width again, the rest of the height, and back to the center. Now this way you are very clear and, and know that the design you are using fits within that hoop, and when you have traced it, it fits within the hoop. So remember, even though this is a 9 by 14 hoop, it will only stitch an 8 by 12 max sewing field. So that's one of the reasons why it's helpful on your machine here to change the size of the hoop to 8 by 12. And then that way it can guarantee the design fits within this area, but you also want to trace it. I also encourage you to make sure that whatever you're stitching, you stitch it you place it in the hoop centered. You don't want to place it, if you're trying to get uh, fussy with where you're stitching something, if you can, at, with all possibilities, put the place where you want to stitch your design in the center of the hoop, and that way it will help you to know that the design is going to be in the center of this frame. Okay, so we're going to get stitching now and we'll come back with more information in a bit. Okay, so the embroidery is finished stitching now and we need to be very careful removing the hoop just like we did when we put the hoop on. So we're going to remove the latch and slide it towards us. But remember now we can't clear this, um, this clamp with the edge. So we need to slide it over to the side and gently slide it out through the corner. The same thing will happen too if you have a, if you need to replace the bobbin during the stitching, you will need to bring the design back to the center and then remove the hoop just like we did. So let's see some more examples and samples we used stitching on these awesome Durky sash frames. So here's the photo stitch I did, and one of the things I wanted to mention to you, if you remember when we were at the machine and I talked about centering the design, that the design needs to be centered in the hoop, and that is the best way to prevent any possible risk of running into the sides here and any of the edges of the clamps. So if you see here, my design doesn't look like it's centered. And that is because the way the frame is created to be able to work with the presser foot. So here I have the presser foot for my brother. And as you can see, the way the presser foot is, this is the part obviously that goes down, but then you have this part over here. and. The way the frame is made with a larger area over on the right side as opposed to the left side is because you have this area that's coming down and though this part doesn't touch the bottom or doesn't touch the bottom itself, you don't want this part coming down and hitting the frame. So when you take a design off of the machine and you look at it and it doesn't look like it's centered. It is centered on my markings. If you can see here, I have my line here. So it is centered on my markings. So when I centered it in the hoop, it is centered on my markings. 
but it is not centered in the hoop, if that makes sense. But that is not a problem for the design and the way I hooped it because of where the lines are and the notches on the frames. So I hope that makes sense. So this design had over 64,000 stitches and took an hour and 40 minutes to stitch out. And you can see here, there is no puckering, there is no pulling, there is no warping on the fabric. And one of the things about this design is it is all done on, all sewn on a diagonal like this, which could cause a lot of push and pull that happens with the fabric. And you can see this is a piece of linen that I stabilized with some fusible poly mesh. That's the only stabilizer I have on the back of this. And as you can see, it held up amazing. There is no puckering or movement of the fabric at all. And so I'm extremely pleased with how this turned out. So now to remove the design from the hoop is really easy. You just take your handy little tool here and slide either you can slide it on like this or you can just push it on and you flip them up just like so. Very easy to remove the clamps from the frame and take it out of the hoop. All right, I just ran into a situation and I want to share it with you so that you can also be aware of this. So I'm working on some freestanding lace designs in my sash frame here. And I have two layers of the mesh, mesh wash away stabilizer stabilized here in the frame. Um, and so because it's freestanding lace, one of the things that I'm doing with the change of every single color is changing the bobbin thread so that when this is in on display, you don't see the white bobbin thread. So uh, the machine now is going to be starting on this flower here and it took the design all the way out to the very very edge for me to be able to get the hoop off right now I can't so when I unhook it here and I go to pull it I am hitting the back of the frame here the top of the frame here and there's no way for me to get from pull this out here with this being here so one of the things I'm going to do right now is I know what color I'm on. So I'm on this flower here. So it is essentially my fifth step of the design. Actually, the, the, seventh, the seventh step of the design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the frame is still attached. And I am going to come over here, so I know I'm, I'm remembering, you, so you can either use your phone to take a picture of this screen so you know where you need to jump forward to, or you can write it down. But I know I'm on the seventh color, so it's gonna be this step that's next. And what I need to do is I need to bring the frame back to center. So I'm going to press the zero, and it's gonna bring the frame back to zero to the center point, and we will do that now. Okay, so now that the frame is at the zero point here, I can go ahead and remove the hoop like we've done before. So raise the latch, pull it towards me until I've cleared the hoop, cleared the arm here, slide it over to the left, and now pull it out. Now I can change my bobbin thread. Now that my bobbin thread is changed, I can slide the hoop back on in that area right there, turn it, and put the frame back, the hoop back on 
the arm. And now I will go back over here and I will skip forward to step number seven. And I will thread the machine and we will be good to go. So here's some freestanding lace that I did. You can see how amazing it is. Again, there's no puckering. There's no pulling of the stabilizer at all. So amazing. All of these stitches, this design was, again, 50,000 stitches for all of these. And I was able to do all of these in one hoop. So two layers of the wash away mesh and no problems at all. All right, next up, we're gonna make some patches. I have hooped here two layers of the ultra thick water soluble stabilizer. This is not the topper. This is not the stuff you stick on top. This is more of like a thick vinyl. You can also use the mesh type fabric type as well, if you would like to use that, but this is what I had on hand, and so we are going to use this. And you can see how nice and tight that is hooped. All right, so let's get started making some patches. Okay, so I finished the patches now, and I'm going to remove them from the hoop again. You see that? It held that very nicely. I added another layer of mesh stabilizer to the back because I felt like it was my water soluble was a little old and so it was a little brittle, so I needed an extra support. But it was not the hoops problem, it was the stabilizer problem. But that turned out really nice. I'm really happy with that. And I will soak off the stabilizer and have some great patches to give for Mother's Day. Okay, so I'm going to do a quilt block right now, but one of the things I wanted to mention, this is the larger frame. And with the larger frame, they have the side rails have a longer one and a shorter one. And so one of the things I like to do is I like to offset them. So here I have a longer one and the longer one down here. And on the left, I have the shorter one at the bottom and the shorter one at the top on the right. It's just a personal preference. I feel like it helps hold the integrity of whatever is in the hoop better, but that's just a little suggestion. So now we're gonna to go to the machine and stitch a quilt block. So this one, I have the bigger hoop, so I'm going to go into my settings and I'm going to adjust my frame size to the nine and a half by 14. And I'm going to slow the machine down a bit and I'm going to click on okay. So now I know I can see from the border here that this design does fit within the hoop size of the nine and a half by 14. But remember, we are going to do a trace to make sure it's going to fit. So again, to the bottom left, to the bottom right, to the top right, top left, and return to the starting point. And so now I'm guaranteed that it fits within the hoop. I have all my edges on the outside and I can start stitching. Now 
And here's my completed quilt block that I was able to do all in the hoop on the embroidery machine by just hooping some batting. Well, what do you think? Isn't that an amazing frame? I absolutely love it. I had so much fun stitching the picture stitch of my dog, making the freestanding lace flower, the quilt block, and also the patches, just to name a few. So, in order to get the patch, you will need to go to my website, www.creativeappliques.com, and put in the code free patch. When you find the patch on the homepage, put in the code free patch and you will receive, go to checkout and you will receive the patch for free for joining me today. Also, if you would like to purchase the hoops or any other hoops or frames from Durkee Hoops, when you go to the website, you can put in the code DAWN and you will receive a nice discount on your purchase. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and the information that we shared with you about this amazing sash frame. Remember, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, like this video so I know you like my content and I will continue loading up more and make sure that you've subscribed and click that bell. So until next time, guys, Thanks for joining me. Thank you for your time and make your life creative. Bye for now.